Tis the season for college football bowl games, and if you're like me, you'll watch a ton of them in the next few days. But it's easy to forget that behind many of the players, there is a journey of faith. Autry Denson played in four bowl games, has coached in one, and the running backs coach at the University of Notre Dame joins us now. That was back from your days playing against Georgia Tech. With Ron Paulus handing you the football. What do you remember about those bowl games that you played in? A lot of fun, uh, extra time with your guys. Really, that's what it's mm -hmm. about, the camaraderie. And uh, just, you know, exceeding expectations. That's, that, that's the expectation, you know, that uh, you come to Notre Dame and you play football for a while. We talked the last time you were with us about your journey of faith that brought you to Notre Dame, but I, I don't think we really touched that much about you were working in the financial industry, doing very successfully mm -hmm. with Merrill Lynch, I believe. And all of a sudden, you felt the calling through prayer to come back to coaching. Talk about what happened there. Oh, man, it was uh, just unbelievable from the standpoint, of, as you alluded to, I was in the financial industry and was uh, doing what I thought that I was uh, being called to do, you know, uh, provide for my family, got a Notre Dame degree. You just kind of, you know, it, the, the two go hand in hand. And uh, it's real funny that uh, you, it's not what I want, but it was, it's what God wants. So, uh to, to tell you about that story, my wife is the, the superstar in that story because uh, so I come home and I tell my wife that, uh, you know what, usually in that industry, when you decide to leave, you sell your you sell your business. Mm -hmm. So uh, but this time God has something different. So I said, look, uh, we were doing a program at the time that was a student athlete development and I was doing it part time. It was called POISE and it's an acronym for perseverance, opportunity, intelligence, sacrifice and effort. And it was everything that I did to you know, get myself to Notre Dame, you know, uh, student athlete, you know, Bible studies, we were doing their uh, sports performance. So uh, God was leading me to uh, do it full time, which means I would have had to leave Merrill Lynch, uh, go out on my own, no salary. Mm. So I told my wife, I said, uh, God's been dealing with me in this situation. Uh, I feel like he wants me to do that full time. And the caveat is he doesn't want us to save any more money or sell the business because he doesn't want us to be confused that it was our money sustaining us and not him. Hmm. And uh, just my wife being who she is, uh, dated my wife since high school, and uh, her words were, God's been dealing with me the same way, let's mm -hmm. do it. Wow. So uh, we walked out on faith and uh, the rest is history. Mm. Now when you came uh, back in the coaching position with, with Notre Dame, what were some of your expectations there? I would imagine part of the, the draw, the desire, uh, the, the uh, determination was to see others succeed like you've succeeded uh, through that education and through that experience? It was, uh, coaching for me is ministry. I tell people all the time, uh, I, coaching is my job, ministry is my life and, uh, and my calling, and I'm here for the calling. I can get another job, but I have to be faithful to my purpose. So uh, me coming back to Notre Dame was just me, uh, God lead me to where he wants me to go. My family and I have uh, prayed and we've talked about uh, every step of the way, every position that I've taken, and uh, it literally is not where we want to go, but where God wants us to go. So to me, the coolest thing about coming to Notre Dame was it was another opportunity for me to show my kids the importance of prayer and seeking God for guidance. Mm -hmm. But also I get the opportunity like now to brag on God in regards to all I did was be faithful where he put me. And I got the easy part. You know, God has to do the heavy lifting. I just have to be faithful. And so uh, to me, to, that's the, the thing that's most cool about it, that I get mm -hmm. an opportunity to brag about how Christ has worked through prayer and me just constantly seeking his guidance and being obedient that I've been able to be blessed uh, beyond what I could have imagined. Yeah. yeah. As you go into your coaching career, obviously you played for a lot of great coaches, Lou Holtz among them. Uh, talk about the impact that coaches made on you as not only a football player, but as a man. It, it's, it's invaluable. I mean, you, you get a chance to uh, have an opportunity to influence not just that young man or that young person that you're dealing with, but really legacies because they'll be fathers, they'll be husbands, they'll be their brothers that will go back. And you talk about Coach Holtz, you talk about Desmond Robinson, you talk about Earl Mosley, you talk about my little league coach and my high school coach. We still talk on a regular basis because of the impact they've had on me and the type of men they are. So it's just, it's a, a, a great responsibility that I feel just honored to carry, but that's really what it's about. It's not about winning games. That stuff takes care of itself. It's really about winning lives. Mm. Autry, uh, for someone watching today that's listening to your testimony, listening to your story, I mean, it's very evident uh, there's, a, there's the ability and a boldness to step out in faith and, and uh, make changes. And Pastor Mark's gonna be talking about, you know, mm -hmm. reassignments in a little bit. 
but for someone who's like got a, a little reservation of you know leaving the safe and secure and the comfortable behind to step into something new, what would you say to encourage that person to to go ahead and, and to trust God in that way? To understand that, I mean, just the fact that we're here today, the fact that he woke us up is for no other reason and we have purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, one of my prayers every day is that I die to my own will so that I could be alive to his. You know, that I use every, every second that he gives me throughout this day for which it was created. It's the purpose is to glorify him. So to just step out, how do you think you got to this point? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, right. a lot of times we don't acknowledge it. We have the self-made people and all of this stuff, but really it's just God's grace and mercy working behind the scenes before we're, well, I'd say mature enough to acknowledge it. Well, and really you've, you've had to implement so many of these lessons in your career, uh, especially as a football player, uh, a running back, the biggest sin that you can commit is fumbling, and yet you've been able to overcome that sin as well. Uh, there's a story behind that, isn't there? That That is. Now, I'll tell you this. That uh, started uh, with my dad, and it was continued by Coach Lou Holtz. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when you're challenged, one of the things about being an athlete is you pride yourself on being the biggest, fastest, strongest, most you know macho person in the building. So uh, coaches have a way of uh, challenging you. And one of the things that uh, my dad told me was simply, you don't do it. I mean, and you can't get away from that guy. I mean, I live with him. <laughs> uh, so that, that was very influential. And then Coach Holtz, his thing was, fumbling was a lack of courage. And I don't know a man out there huh. that wants to be known for not having courage. So uh, in his own kind of Jedi mind trick way, <laughs> yeah. Coach Holtz, is, uh, he, he was able to get through to me uh, pretty, pretty effectively. As you go forward, you, you've already had the opportunity to coach some terrific talents, and one of them right now is playing for the Seattle Seahawks, C.J. Procise. And you were telling us before this show <laughs> about a, a terrific interaction that you had with C.J., and it, it speaks to the impact that you've already had on him as a, his coach and his mentor. Well, the way I look at it is, is that, uh, and I, I talk to you again, not, not because of me, but because of so many right. great coaches and men that have sold into me, but our relationship should transcend, you know, uh, Notre Dame. It should transcend wherever we were coaching at. It's a lifetime commitment. And I tell those guys, I'm here for as long as you need me. I want to hopefully know their kids and their kids' kids, you know, as long as I can be. And that's what I mean by you realize that it's so much bigger than that one interaction. Mm -hmm. It's a relationship. And it's the ability to continue to mold and continue to lead and guide. So uh, I expect those guys, you know, to, to st continue to be in contact with me. I will be available for them. I'll reach out to them like most parents do. They're like my sons. So if I see something that is not right, social media or something that just needs to be kind of put back in alignment, I take it upon myself to do that. But I just thank those guys for trusting me because, I mean, they, it, it takes a lot for a young person to trust. And so, to me, they're, again, they're the rock stars in this deal. I'm just, you know, being obedient. Now, in your experience uh, through Notre Dame, playing and then pros and then coaching, uh, what's been maybe the, the, the moment that's stood out the most, that's been the, the, the most defining for you? The most defining in regards to just... To your faith. To my faith. Yeah. I'll tell you my best Notre Dame memory, all right? And, and, and it's funny how I alluded to before that uh, you, when you grew up in the church, one of the things that I did really well was I, I, I learned how to play church, you know, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I wasn't always doing what I needed to do, but I knew how to act, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. my heart now was always, you know, for Christ, and so uh, my senior year, I hated public speaking, avoided it at all costs. <laughs> oh, I remember. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, finally, Coach Davey comes to me and he says, listen, you, this is the last home game, last pep rally, you have to speak. And this is before the pep rally. And uh, he says, you got to do it. I can't, I mean, we can't put it off. It's here now. You're doing it. So I, I say a quick prayer and literally allow just, you know, God to lead me. And uh, they always introduce the starting running back, so the starting offense or the starting defense. Well, I have such respect for our walk-on players. While I was playing and even now, I just feel like those guys are the true heroes of the program because for our Autry Denson, for our CJ Pro Sites, it's not that we don't have to work hard, but we have motivation. We get to play on Saturday, people recognize who you are, and you know if God sees fit, you can play at the next level. Those guys are purely for the love of the game. Mm. So what I did is I was able to introduce all of our walk-ons, have them stand, stand up and be acknowledged for their hard work, and to me, just the relationships that I've had that have continued since we've left 20-some years ago, just that memory and that 
ability to be able to do what my mom always told me was I'm blessed so that I could be a blessing to others. Mm -hmm. So to me, that's my favorite memory in regards to just Notre Dame in general, being able to recognize the guys that I truly appreciate are the heroes of our program. I'll tell you what, it's all about making an impact where we live, whether it's with our kids or our community. And this man, I've had the chance to watch him blossom from that player that didn't really want to talk to anybody <laughs> in the media to what you've seen today. It's a, it's a pleasure to see you once again and connect with Autry. Go to harvest-tv.com. Coming up later, Pastor Mark shares how to pursue your purpose in today's connections. But up next, Brian Bush has today's Holy Land moment, and we'll have that after this. Thank you.